This is going to be a video that deals with section 2.7. I believe that I'm going to be splitting this video or this section up into probably three videos. So um, there should be multiples that you can pull from. The first thing that I want to talk about is stretching and shrinking the parent functions from section 2.6. So you remember in section 2.6, we dealt with the library of functions. Um, those are called the parent functions. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be messing with the parents. So I've got here three examples um, in parts A, B, and C. And I'm going to move through these pretty quickly. So you're going to want to pause and actually um, decide or digest um, what I've done with these three. Um, but take a look. Um, in the first one, notice that I am taking my parent, my squaring parent, x squared, and I'm multiplying by a 2. So I'm doubling my squaring parent. Here in, in part B, I'm taking my squaring parent and I'm taking half of my squaring parent. Now, the third one is a little different. Um, the squaring is on the outside. Um, so this up here, I'm actually taking the squaring parent and multiplying by a number. But here, I'm, I'm multiplying by my number before I do the squaring because the square is on the parentheses. It's not just on the x. So that one is going to take a little bit different order of operations. So let's find out what happens when I do that. And um, for this first one, um, I, wanted, I want to simultaneously use um, a table of values as well as your calculator. So you can enter these into your calculator, but it's helpful at least on the first one to do a table of values so that you can see what's happening. So um, notice that what I've got here in my table is this table of values. This is my original parent. So this is what we would have talked about in section um, 2.6. And you'll notice that on all three of these, I already have the parent drawn. So that dashed or dotted um, curve there is the parent. And so let's take our parent. And for this first example, let's double our parent. The x value is going to st stay the same. So these are going to be unchanged. But then I'm going to take that value, plug it in, square it, and then double it. And so what we have then is um, the following value. So we can go up to our graph and we can, um, and I've already marked those out. So again, you may need to pause the video so that you can um, draw those out on your own. And you'll see that um, the parent is not quite as skinny as the new, as the kid, um, as the new graph is. Now let's go over to part B. So this time we want to take that exact same um, list of values of x and we want to plug those in, square them, and then take half. And so what we'll have is these. And so when I go and draw this graph, you'll notice that the child or the new curve is wider than the parent was. Last but not least, let's take our x values the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to half each x value, and then after we half the x value, then we will square using the order of operations there. And so these are the values that we'll get. Some of those are a little bit difficult to draw. The one quarters are a little difficult to draw. So again, you may need to pause the video so that you can um, draw those properly. I've already had those marked out. And you'll see that this is definitely um, a much wider graph than the parent was, even though the number that I was multiplying by seemed to be the same, it was even wider than um, the h of x graph. So then let's take a look and see, all right, how does each one of these um, compare to the parent function? Well, we see, let me zoom out just a little bit, we see, first of all, that g of x is definitely skinnier than the parent is. h of x and k of x are both wider than the parent is. So then here's, um, let's put it all together. If you've got um, an a value, now no, let's notice what this a value is. The a value is what's being multiplied by the parent. f of x is my parent and my a value is being multiplied by my parent. Now, I want you to look at two different things. The one that I have circled right now, notice that is being multiplied outside of the parent, whereas the one down here, the a is being multiplied on the inside of the parent. 
I want you to start noticing when I am doing things outside the parent versus inside the parent equations because that's going to make a difference. It's going to tell me what kind of change to make if it's outside um, the parent equation or inside the parent equation. So this first guy, let's take a look here. If my A is greater than 1, then what's going to happen, this is going to be like the example that I did here in part A. If my A is greater than 1, then I'm going to have a vertical stretch. And that vertical stretch is going to be a vertical stretch of A. So I'm going to add that in here, of A. Notice that for the second one, my A's are between 0 and 1. So I'm really not dealing with any negative values yet. We'll, we'll get to that in just a moment. Um, so for the moment, my A value, I'm really only looking at the size of A. Is it um, larger than 1 or is it between 0 and 1? If this happens, then I'm going to have a vertical shrink or sometimes it's called a vertical compression. And that example is going to be part B here. All right, so I have um, a vertical shrink. So if you can imagine a force on the top and the bottom, and it's pushing the parent from the top and the bottom, because this is a vertical compression, um, then you can see that my, my graph is getting wider because I'm pressing it from the top and the bottom. Whereas on this one, if you can imagine my, I'm pulling from the top and the bottom, this is why it's a vertical stretch. All right, so then let's go to the horizontal stretching and shrinking. So in this particular occasion, if my A value is between zero and one, notice again that I'm multiplying on the inside of the parents then I'm gonna be having a horizontal stretch. Okay, so let's go back up to part C. My A value was definitely between zero and one. So how is this a horizontal stretch? Okay, so now you need to imagine here that horizontally I am stretching from both sides. I'm pulling, and you can see that when I pull the parent from side to side, my graph is going to get wider. This is going to be a horizontal stretch. And I didn't do an example of this one, but if I have um, an A value that's larger than 1 um, and it's on the inside of the parent equation, then this is going to be a horizontal shrink or horizontal compression. All right, so let's talk about um, reflecting. So this first example, and again, I, I didn't do a table of values for this one, so you could do this in your calculator. Um, it would be good to practice graphing in your calculator. I've already shown you that. And remember that I've also given you some links on how to um, graph on your calculator. That's in my lab. Um, it's under the um, video, and uh, I think it's the um, resource library, the video and resource library or something like that. There are links to the graphing calculators, keystrokes. There's also links to these videos. All right, so um, if I uh, graph not just my parent absolute value of x, but if I put a negative on the outside, then what I have here is going to be a reflection. And this is a reflection over the x-axis. Notice that what I did to the parent was outside the parent and the movement was vertical. Okay, so again, just like up here, um, when it was outside the parent, I had a vertical stretch or shrink. When it was inside the parent, I had a horizontal stretch or shrink. Here, when it's outside the parent, I have a vertical movement. Um, on this one, um, this one's a little strange if you um, put that negative on the inside of the parent. It doesn't really look any different um, than what you started with. Um, the dotted graph is what the original parent was, and the solid graph is what the new guy is. So it's no different. Um, and if you think about um, reflecting over the y-axis, Okay, so the y-axis is the mirror. If you reflect it over the y-axis, then it is going to land exactly where it started. 
All right, so um, let's also just kind of clear this up and, and give it some um, a summary. Reflecting across an axis, if your negative is outside the parent, then you're going to be reflecting across the x-axis. If your negative is inside the parent on just the x, then you're reflecting over the y-axis. All right, this is where I'm going to stop this video. The next video will deal with symmetry.